Hi, I'm Stanislas Lagarde. I'm a neurologist in the Hospital of Marseille in the Epilepsy Unit and a researcher in the ex Marseille University. And today I will talk about our latest study in brain about the functional connectivity using stereotactic EEG during enterectal state of refractory focal epilepsy. Epilepsy is a devastating disease uh, with more than 50 million of people living with across the world and a huge increase of complication rates including premature death. About 30% of patients are drug resistant and in these cases the epilepsy surgery is an interesting treatment option. In some of these patients, intracranial EEG recording of seizures are required in order to define uh, correctly the epileptogenic zone to remove. So, why particularly study the connectivity in epilepsy? Firstly, it's because when you look at the intracranial organization of epileptic seizures, in a lot of cases, we see a simultaneous onset across large-scale brain regions, suggesting a network organization of the epileptic seizures. Moreover, between seizures, using a structural MRI, there is an alteration durably of the structural connectivity, with a preservation of the epileptogenic zone and the propagation zone connectivities, and an alteration uh, with a decrease of the structural connectivity within the non evolved zone. To summarize, there is a lot of connectivity changing in epilepsies, both between and during seizure, in structural and functional connectivity, and it was shown using MRI and electrophysiological recording. It's a conceptually important point that spatial organization of seizures mainly depends on both the excitability and the connectivity, leading to some work to both virtual epileptic patients based on the patient-based connectivity and uh, simulation using models. So why particularly study the functional connectivity using ACG? It is because the relation between structural and functional connectivity is altered in epilepsy, and moreover, the relation between fMRI and ECG connectivity is also altered in epilepsy. So it's important to specifically focus on the ACG extract uh, functional connectivity. Our aim in this paper was to have uh, a CEG study with a large-scale spatial synchrony across the brain, a homogeneous type of epilepsy with a sufficient number of patients, and a clear definition of epileptic subnetworks and broadband study. So we include 59 patients with malformation of cortical development uh, recorded uh, for clinical uh, purpose by ECG. Firstly, we select some channel of interest with uh, 76 brain region samples. We select period of resting state without artifacts. After that, we quantitatively analyze the seizure onset in order to define three subnetworks, namely the epileptogenic zone, the propagation zone, and the non-involved zone. After that, we estimate the functional connectivity on the resting state period using nonlinear analysis, namely H2. We uh, compute the intrazone connectivity the interzone connectivity and the directionality between the zones. Here is an example of the type of result we have in a patient. So, we firstly, we found a difference in the connectivity according to the zone. As you can see in this figure, there is higher functional connectivity within the structure of the epileptogenic zone and the propagation zone than within the structure of the non involved zone. Moreover, epileptonic zone is more connected with the propagation zone than with the non-involved zone. After all, epileptogenic zones have more intrinsic connectivity than non-involved zones. 
Secondly, we look at the directionality of this connectivity between zones, and we found in alpha band analysis a directionality going from the epileptogenic area to the non-involved zone, and in beta band analysis a directionality going from the epileptogenic zone to the propagation zone and to the non-involved zone, suggesting a leading road of the epileptogenic zone. What is the association between our result in connectivity and post-surgical seizure outcome? We found a clear difference between patients seizure-free and non-seizure-free after surgery, with patients non-seizure-free having higher intra-non-involved non zone connectivity and higher connectivity between the non-involved zone and the propagation zone, suggesting a, a more diffuse alteration of the connectivity in the non-seizure-free patients. In synthesis, we found higher functional connectivity within epileptogenic zone, propagation zone, and between epileptogenic zone and propagation zone, and lower connectivity in non evolved zone uh, during the enteric test in refractory focal epilepsy. Thank you for your attention.